Soon, artificial intelligence and machine learning will have a conspicuous presence even in the field of antenna design, technology, and engineering in general. I'll give you an example in a minute. But after AI gradually learns and gains the capabilities to carry out the routine tasks of antenna engineering, only, only those with strong uh, knowledge of the electromagnetic theory and antenna design will be able to succeed in this field. But the good news is that the AI itself can help you gain that knowledge necessary to thrive. So that is what this course is all about. If you're interested, please subscribe to the channel. This course is about to enable you to do computational electromagnetics without having to learn and master all the programming and documentation tools that usually people had to do prior to uh, starting this field. AI tools are going to be used to develop and implement computational methods to solve antenna problems and um, AI tools are going to be used to make plots and many plots. Each equation will be, def will be dependent on a couple parameters as well. By changing these parameters and making and replotting, you will gain intuition into how these parameters are affecting the overall function and also to document our progress document to produce publication quality documents using free software not paid software such as microsoft word so everything is going to be free uh, and so and what programming languages are we going to be into mostly if i ask you to use fortran which is very popular in supercomputers you guys are not going to be happy since it's uh is uh, in the job marketplace it's not a required skill so C++ will be our choice and for plotting mostly GNU plot or LaTeX has its functionality too and when your document is produced by LaTeX it is well respected in the academia in the scientific field especially as you come closer to physics and mathematics it's uh, very respected well, plus it's free and its quality is better than what Word or Microsoft uh, Office can produce. So the important thing is that before this course or before the ChatGPT era, one had to learn and master these tools to be able to use them. Tools such as C++, LaTeX, GNUplot, not anymore. You don't have to learn them. You don't have to master them before being able to use them. ChatGPT helps you to get started and then you can actually uh, use the starting code that ChatGPT gives you to build on and build on. And I'm going to give you an example of this, how this works. Let's say that we want to make a presentation out of this uh, items that we spoke about. And um, so let's go to uh, chat GPT and uh, ask to make a LaTeX document or a presentation slide out of uh, what you can see on the screen all right let's type it here on chat GPT that uh, produce a LaTeX uh, document So this is going to be as if you're using PowerPoint presentation, but uh, of course LaTeX is free. And I don't expect you to install anything on in, in this first lecture. Uh, we are going to be using online LaTeX compilers, but for the second lecture and on, I'm going to be expecting you to have your own LaTeX C++ compiler and IDEs. So as you see, you asked 
ChatGPT to give you the latest code it gives you and then when you press copy code over there you come to this website it's called overleaf.com it's a free latex compiler you create your own project and it gives you a basic sample code and on the right side you have the output which is a PDF file uh, so a basic sample code is given to you on the left here so you can delete it and paste what ChatGPT gave you hit compile button and uh, now you can download as you see there are many slides so if you download it you can see that uh, that's the first slide the title second slide third slide uh, fourth slide and the fifth slide so and also there's some navigation tools that it has put at the bottom of them which you don't get in Microsoft PowerPoint I guess which are really cool uh, so it's really nice to have this now you have the, this here if you notice uh, the title where it says that this uh, what is this course about is on line 5 and then uh, on line 11 it says frame title page so frame obviously creates a, uh, a new slide and then in the itemized section you probably guess that that it creates items each um, bullet points so i add this this is a test and then compile it and it appears there so you recognize the pattern so you look at what ChatGPT has created and you guess a pattern so frame creates new slide and you know it now okay fine uh, Yeah, so we know that now, before this course and before the ChatGPT area, one had to learn and master these tools to be able to use them. Not anymore. That is the whole point of this course, that uh, you are going to be enabled to use these tools without having to learn them. Computational methods, uh, programming languages, uh, and uh, free documentation is no longer a is no longer an obstacle all right now let's proceed to uh, the promise that we had made earlier and provide you with an example of how the simple tasks uh, usually carried out by a junior antenna engineer can be replaced by AI so let's type into uh, prompt design a patch antenna uh, add some frequency and with a certain choice of substrate and with a certain gain doesn't matter what you type there as long as those are not really uh, of practical possibilities and let's see what chat GPT responds All right, so it's choosing a substrate for you. It finds its uh, relative permittivity and thickness, that's nice. It's choosing the commonly used formulas for calculating W. Um, and the length. And oh, it proceeds to calculate the feed point too. Nice. To be honest, I wouldn't trust uh, whatever it's uh, providing at this point, but it's definitely a good point. You can actually understand what it's doing and go check it to see if it makes sense. Now, at this first lecture, it's not our goal to do that, but it's definitely worthwhile. All right, now it gave you some code. Uh, oh, it, it wrote some Python code and ran the code to be able to actually uh, calculate some, uh, some parameters for itself. Nice. Nice, nicely done. So, 
So now imagine that uh, after this point, what uh, you usually want to do is to uh, create the model. So let's say use HFSS scripting languages to create the model. So you want a simulation software to actually simulate this for you. Now, a lot of us, we don't work with scripting language of HFSS, but that is the backbone of uh, HFSS itself. The models are created, uh, can be created via uh, text commands like this. So it's creating the patch antenna, it's defining design variables, it's defining the substrate. Um, all right, let's wait for it. It's taking some time. It's setting up a simulation parameter, a simulation um, s setup. If you scroll to the right, you're going to see that all the parameters are uh, defined in <coughs> these long commands and then it gives you instructions how to use this. So obviously you're going to have to input this into HFSS and I'm not saying that this is going to work seamlessly right off the bat but uh, this is done by a large language model not by the company who created HFSS simply based on large language models. Imagine when uh, the company who created HFSS, uh, well, or not a company who owns it, ANSYS starts implementing this and uh, so then that will be much more capable so you would be able to basically talk to the model and it can create and simulate the antenna design for you. So let's proceed to make some further changes to the model using the same script, HFSS script. Uh, we're going to add some sweep in frequency and then some optimization. So I guess just uh, I will be entering the prompts and waiting for ChatGPT to respond and you will be able to basically um, see that it is actually capable of uh, doing all this adding frequency sweep and optimization. I will let this section run and complete by itself. It doesn't need further commenting on this small section.
Now, I'm going to ask this to now if, if you want to document this, if you don't want to lose this, so we can ask that create a uh, LaTeX document summarizing our uh, antenna design and the codes. All right. I'm going to wait until this is done. Now notice now that it's creating sections and subsections. All right. So it seems it's done. All right. Now I am going to copy this code into this one here. And uh, I am simply going to replace this whole thing, delete it, create another one, recompile it. Now let's see how this is going to look. Download. All right. So design a rectangular Microsoft uh, Microsoft patch antenna. So. All right. So it is. Uh, not including the uh, code here so what you can do is come back here so when you see that there is a section here one antenna design two hfss scripting two one an antenna model creation so these antenna design and hfss script scripting are sections antenna model creation is a subsection so let's go to the code and find out here um okay where it says initial part of the hfss script could go here that is uh see here it says hfss scripting and this is antenna model creation so so these that's a subsection that you want to basically if you like you can delete this whole thing So you're just recognizing the pattern, right? Where that code should uh, belong, and you can basically go and do that. Copy code, come here, copy paste, part math, recompile. Let's see what happens here. So you can see that, yeah, your code is there. Download PDF. Your input to your input to HFSS is here. You can cr do that with the rest of the model. Uh, if you want to include all these uh, calculations, I think you can actually do that. Maybe that did the copying section. So I'm going to put it in the antenna design section. I'm not going to organize it. I just want to put it after this, uh, uh, this, it says, with uh, this, uh, that section, the itemized section. So let me see when I paste it, what happens to be there. Usually it, oh, sorry, I didn't compile it. All right, now it's compiled. So usually it gives you the output. When you copy, it gives you the output that could be pasted into LaTeX document. So it works with LaTeX itself. So all these steps now are put into d this document, and you can simply save it uh, on your own computer. So that is an example of how uh, AI tools are going to eliminate simple tasks so you need to be ready you need to learn strong theory you need to uh, be able to use these tools without um, 
actually having properly learned them without having mastered them as you use them you're going to have to gradually learn them uh, but uh, not knowing these tools such as uh, well uh, C++ LaTeX shouldn't intimidate you from entering uh, th this field so in this course uh, you will use AI tools to write your own codes to create the mesh some well you need to create uh, you need to mesh the structure so you could uh, solve uh, the Maxwell's equations on that mesh you need to simulate so the method that you're going to choose either it's a method of moments finite element or um, finite difference time domain uh, ray tracing or physical optics are among the things that we will use in this course and then also we will use these well the AI and machine learning tools to also do some process and plotting and that plotting also is going to be also repeated on some formulas not just results some in the theory we will use that plotting for to to plot curves of the same formula for different values of a particular parameter to give you an understanding and intuition uh, to help you gain an intuition regarding how that formula works actually so that's actually a very important part of this course we will provide rigorous der uh, derivations of equations you know, maybe not all the time but uh, it's going to be very different from uh, the usual co courses on antenna uh, nowadays in universities they don't go deep into a theory we will we have to because we're going to uh, dive deep into uh, the core of equations such that we can actually simulate we can model and simulate <clears throat> using our own codes so uh, then so the structure of this course is going to be as follows that we will first provide some background theory of course uh, electrostatics magnetostatics uh, and then electromagnetics and wire antennas wire antennas are going to be mostly done in uh, a method of moments uh, so we'll use of course C++ GNU plot and LaTeX here and as you see next is patch antennas and horn antennas then we'll talk about array theory and linear array synthesis planar array synthesis and some beam forming as it is done in uh, cellular communication such as LTE and 5G and then we'll talk about parabolic reflectors so the, the the main textbooks that you i really recommend is antenna theory and design by elliot uh, and this is basically i would say probably uh the most respected book in the field of antenna among those who are strong in theory uh, Another respected book is uh, Antenna Theory by uh, Balanus, and this is, of course, more recent. And it's, I believe, the latest one is fourth edition, and it really provides you with uh, some theory, also some new concepts, and this actually provides you with some codes to do some modeling. So some of what we discuss in this course is also included in um, in the Balanus book, but in a very different style and format. Uh, all right, so let's start. So we need to start from somewhere. And uh, so we'll start from electromagnetics. And in electromagnetics, if you have a point charge, somewhere then that is going to apply 
say a force on another charge y you notice that this the direction of this force is basically along the line that connects these two and uh, Coulomb's law indicates that um, this force is going to be equal to right uh, the value of the uh, force itself that uh, the, the the value of the charge that the force is applied on uh, then times the value of the the other force um, the other point charge divided by 4e epsilon now we can say that I'm going to choose a notation from Elliot here um, now R is um, this direction R is uh, R is in this direction and R uh, and the R that you see at the denominator here is basically the absolute value of the magnitude of that vector R so if we if we put this in a coordinate system here if we have a coordinate system right so if they are positioned at the same place now assume that we have two sets of coordinate systems x y z and another one is x prime y prime and z prime so um, different variables so all I want to say is that um, there is R which is basically position of uh, sorry about that let me actually choose this with different color so R is could be this vector here okay and now r prime is this one okay so r is going to be dependent on x y z Whereas R prime is going to be dependent by okay now R capital R is R minus R prime sorry So, in, in the Cartesian system, this is basically uh, the vector R, capital R, right? All right. All right, so now we have uh, quite a lot to work with. So usually now this is this part is uh, considered as uh, 
looking at this part is considered as E as the electric field so so what we do is we rewrite that formula F is equal to Q times E and the electric field is equal to Uh, yeah, Q prime R3. All right, fair enough. So, in, uh, in reality, we don't have point charges. We have continuous charges. So, if, imagine that we have a sum of these uh, or imagine that we have a continuous continuous distribution of this charge somewhere and we divide them into small pieces right small pieces and each one is uh, considered point charge and then you uh, can compute uh, the electric field uh, for each one and then you sum them up and if these ones are uh, infinitesimally small, then the sum uh, combined uh, converts into uh, an integral over the volume. And the way we write it is like this. The electric field is equal to charge distribution, g prime. It's very important that these are dependent on primed parameters. sure that okay. all right so now that we have our electric field the important thing is that uh, we want to know what their curl and divergence is these are and the fields of in the area of electromagnetics antenna curl and divergence are very important they describe uh, in vector calculus together combined together they can describe a field and we later we will see that a lot of things are uh, described uh, are, are known in terms of curl and divergence so uh, it is crucial to know what the curl and divergence of such fields are All right, um, now let's proceed and calculate curl of the electric field. Curl of electric field is going to be curl of uh, this integral here. I'm going to separate this and write it here dv prime all right so what's important to notice first of all is that this part um, this part is both function of x y z and x prime y prime z prime whereas this part is only function of x y z and this operator operates only on x y z so these ones are constant so when i want to take of course i can take the uh, curl inside the integral since it is the integral is a summation for uh, primed parameters and so they can be 
I can switch uh, their order. So the curl can come actually here. I can move the curl here. But then I can actually again move it here because this uh, row itself, charge distribution, is also um, a function of only the primed parameters. So then this uh, will become curl of E, or you can add a F here, means that it's for free, sp uh, free charges or free space, so it's not bound by charge distribution. Uh, so that is going to be curl of all right. So now we are at a place that uh, we need to have some knowledge of this part. So what is this curl usually? So this curl is, uh, is zero because, and the reason it, it's zero is that R over our vector over R3 is equal to uh, the gradient of so because of these two reasons and we have this identity that curl of gradient of any function is zero is identical to zero. So these two will give me curl of right. is equal to zero. So as you guess, knowledge of calculus is necessary for this course, vector calculus. But let's see if, uh, if ChatGPT could have helped us here. What is the curl of a vector over magnitude of the vector to the power of three. Let's see. As you see, the notation is coming completely in in LaTeX, but. Uh, So, but here, uh, we see that here he got it wrong. Uh, the curl is on top. Uh, so, I'm going to stop it. Or assume that the curl applies to the whole fraction not just the numerator. Yeah, 
now I got it right now let's see that how is it going to argue Um, so now it's uh, as we see it's going to do some um, calculations it's going to continue in the Cartesian mode but that is where uh, uh, like where a a R AI comes short here is where the knowledge of calculus and theoretical knowledge becomes very important so you can actually lead to saying that um, um, is G a gradient of any vector actually it can be gradient of a vector since it's uh, So now it tells you, but but um, say, what is a gradient of one over r? actually yeah it seems reasonable here you see that the denominator is um, is all r3 r to the power of 3 and if you factor out the denominator can you factor out the denominator you know, from the result <clears throat> all right so as we had it before a uh, gradient of uh, a field here uh, as it says also here uh, curl of gradient here it says a curl of gradient uh, zero but uh, we don't know that but uh, now actually we help them understand so this is uh, why I say that the strong theoretical knowledge is required but you don't have to have the knowledge of the tools such as C++ or Python or whatever is it you're going to use uh, <clears throat> but that is strong theoretical knowledge is required so let's go back to what we had before now we know that our uh, curl of e is equal to zero okay that one we know now so what about um, divergence of e okay let's say divergence of e is equal to divergence of So as we had here, uh, that divergence is also a function of x, y, z. So 
we could bring it right uh, next to this R over R3. So this is also going to be equal to All right. So divergence of um r over r3 we know that from uh, calculus from vector calculus is equal to 4 pi uh, over four pi times the delta function, the uh, the three D delta function, and uh, yeah, it's a funny thing that if you want to basically go a little bit deep into why this is the case. You can use the uh, this theorem that divergence of this is equal to, or the integral of this, right, over some volume is basically equal to over uh, well times ds and assume that uh, your and put your put your charge in the uh, in the center of the coordinates uh, so so when you have this basically you're going to have um, a r divided by uh, R2. That is, AR is unit vector. So I basically simplified it into this, saying that, okay, R prime is positioned at zero. Uh, and so now uh, R is simply equal to R dot a r and then this is going to lead to this section here ds uh, now ds vector calculus is equal to r squared sine of theta uh, we don't have dr we have uh, d theta d phi all right so now let's proceed with that. Sorry about that. Let's proceed, and uh, you're going to have this dot r squared sine of theta, and its direction is also a r. So, and then d theta d phi all right so then this when dot product with this one is going to equal to one this is going to be cancelled so d theta d phi goes from zero to two pi and is independent it comes out so it becomes so this becomes uh, phi 0 2 pi uh, d phi times the whole thing times uh, integral of sine of theta d theta from uh, 2 pi and this is basically minus cosine of theta from pi to right
So this part becomes 2 pi times this is uh, minus cosine of pi that is basically 1 cosine of pi is minus 1 minus that is minus minus 1 is uh, 2 So basically 2 pi times 2, the whole thing becomes 4 pi. Four pi. So we have this now. We can say that we have divergence of divergence of this R3 uh, dV is equal to basically 4 pi so that in since this is correct for any value of R now so it must be we could choose that S to be small or large it didn't matter, right? And if you also, if you uh, take this divergence in the Cartesian s system, Okay, if you, uh, I'm going to show you why is it actually the case? What is the, so let's go back to what uh, ChatGPT wrote us. Uh, what is the, um, Divergence of um, divergence in um, spherical. What is the divergence formula in the spherical coordinate system? All right, so uh, since since this function is not uh, r over r three, right? Uh, and assuming that r prime is at the center of the coordinate system, so now this is not a function of uh, theta or phi. So as you see here the uh, last two terms are immediately equal to zero and um, okay now this is basically this is basically um, this part is basically now it's going to be a r over r2 right so now we see that in the formula here you have uh, uh, r2 times vr that that vr is 1 over r2 and now you're mar you're multiplying it by vr uh, by r2 then r2s are going to cancel each other so so you're going to have a constant number here so the point is now you have reached a conclusion that 
we have this one and two we know that um, and we know that uh, is zero when r is not equal to when r is not equal to zero right so then uh sorry then one and two together give you the fact that uh, divergence of r over r3 is Uh, sorry, times 4 pi. So then, considering that you had that parameter, considering that you had that parameter here, rho over 4 pi epsilon naught, then you're going to have this. Sorry, four pi's are cancelled, and then go right. So now the reason I, uh, so now the reason I put uh, the uh, the unprimed variables here is that after I do my integration, after I move, uh, after I move the, uh, after I move my source to the center of coordinate system so and I take my integral I take this divergence where my I, I take my divergence where my uh, observation point is right and every for every other source points we have this uh, divergence is equal to in in this number two right here so the only place that is going to matter is is basically when r is zero when r is zero and that is when r is equal to r prime and then uh, so the x prime is equal to uh, x y prime is equal to y and then z prime is equal to z so that's the only place where the charge has an effect in the divergence and so we have this formula so so now we have uh, curl and divergence of e uh, determined all right so now how we can use this to say say if you have a conductor rod like this and somebody has put the charge of Q has distributed some charge over this. Now, how are we going to determine that charge distribution? So now this is where we're going to use uh, C++ and we're going to determine the charge distribution, but we're not assuming any knowledge of C++, we will use ChatGPT for that. So, some charge Q is uh, distributed across this conductor. Let's say rod, it's, um, uh, we consider it to be linear, only one dimensional case, so that it's easy for us to analyze. All we know is, uh, is this equation. All we know is this equation on top here, this one. 
and of course uh, we know that the force the electric force is computed by this formula that's all we need to know uh, so we can get the charge distribution across this um, line of conductor this line segment of conductor so how do we do that all right there there's ways to 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 do that and what are we going to do here is basically let's say that uh, I divide this to different uh, segments and I'm going to assume that all these segments are so small that I can assume some charge uh, on them uh, if if this is segment number one it goes all the way to segment number n and I'm going to assume that qn is uh, is the same uh, across this line here so qn here and q1 here so one thing I know is uh, q1 plus q2 plus all the way to qn is equal to q that's uh, that's something i know and uh, how else am i going to find this uh, how am i going to find the charge distribution all i know is that this uh, force So uh, Fi is, say, the force, uh, the net for force on charge Qi. All right. So there's a charge, say, uh, QI all right and uh, of course there's going to be FI applied on it and for this there's going to be other charges involved all other charges but so QJ so all other charges are going to be contributing to this this one this one all of them all of them are going to be contributing of course it's not going to be applying any force on itself all right so qj qj is going to be my source and uh, qi is going to be a point of observation so back to white so then f i is going to be sum of uh, q i q j over 4 pi now uh, the distance between those two if I want to write it in so uh, R okay now since this is linear it's either in this direction it's either in positive x direction or in negative x direction right so let's say that if um, J if uh, if J is bigger than I, so the force is going to be in negative direction. And if uh, I, well, I assume that those are of the same uh, sign, the charges are of the same si sign. And if uh, J smaller than I, if J is somewhere here and I is somewhere there, then uh, the force applied on I will be on the the positive sign all right 
So now what is the value of Rj? Considering that these, these delta Rs are constant. Then this is going to be easy. Let's say uh, yeah. Let's consider R J to be equal to um, I minus J. times delta r right now then this contains the uh, the sign as well so basically I could directly use this one in the formula and this is for j so the summation is over j q i q j now um, There's epsilon here, 4 pi epsilon, and then you I minus J. All right, so what do we have here? Then actually this, let's take these out, all the constant ones. So we're going to left with uh, this one. And this one comes here too. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be left with, uh, sorry. I minus J sorry and then we have a sign of I minus J here all right so that's what we're going to be left with so now of course um, so this is basically uh, it's saying that I if if the forces are going to be in equilibrium let me make a mistake here so this is again going to show that you need to have a deep knowledge of theory and uh, intuition and, and understanding of uh, ele electromagnetic electromagnetics of the problem right so let's say that uh, well this just comes into the uh, comes into the form that if I have to write it down for every fi then for uh, I have to simply repeat this uh, for different values of I, right? All right. So it pretty much looks like what I'm talking about is F1, F2, F3, all the way to Fn. This is basically sum of... Um, So uh, we need to make sure that we have um, a solvable scenario. We have a matrix whose determinant is not zero, and we could basically solve this uh, problem. If we consider 
this matrix to be A and this matrix to be, say, uh, B and this matrix, this matrix to be uh, F, let's say, then what we have is A times B is equal to F, right? And Fs we have assumptions about that they are zero. All Fs should be zero because the forces, so assumption, now I'm going to write this, all Fis should be zero, okay? So now this defines our uh, F matrix and um, then we need to have uh, A plus A, A inverse, so, so the sum of all, so the sum of all charges, right, uh, should be Q that's right but then we could also assume that the sum of qi from i is equal to 1 to k should be q over 2 and then the sum from uh, k plus 1 to uh, n is equal to 2k that qi should be q2 so these two assumptions but these two assumptions then come at the uh, first and last rows of uh, first and last rows of uh, the matrix they change the first and last rows of matrix such that if um, such that if I is equal to if I is equal to 1 then in this matrix a uh, in this matrix A i um, J is going to be equal to uh, so I, I'm going to write this equation right I, I, I have to select all the Q's that are uh, less than are equal to or less than K so this is going to be 1 for uh, all J's so it's it's better here to write J not to confuse anything so for J 1 2 K and A uh, okay For j equals k plus one to n, right? And now let's come to a case where i is equal to n, right? Then n uh, or I can still show it with i doesn't matter. J is equal to zero for So this doesn't matter uh, in, in which order I write them, y uh, i equals 1 or n. I could switch their places. It doesn't matter. I simply just want to change these two rows in the matrix. The first one could uh, indicate um, could indicate the first half, or it could indicate the second half. Both are uh, equally valid so now uh, 
I want to write a code in C++ using uh, ChatGPT to be able to solve this problem. Now, of course, this is going to be uh, a task that uh, requires some uh, careful prompt into ChatGPT. It, uh, we, we, we have to be careful about what we are asking for here. So let's, uh, let's, let's uh, go back to the definition. So, so this is one thing that I need to remember. I'm going to write, uh, change, sorry, I'm gonna change the color to, uh, to blue here. So, so this is one thing that I should tell ChatGPT. And then this is um, another thing that I should tell ChatGPT. And then these are basically uh, a third modification that I should tell ChatGPT, all right? So let's uh, explain a problem. Let's explain the problem to ChatGPT. So let's remember that first, so what we have to remember is this one, sign. Okay, and uh, n is equal to 2k, and this equation. So, so I have prepared a few lines, basically summarizing what we spoke about. And uh, now we can feed these to ChatGPT and ask it to write a C++ code for us to uh, create our model. So the user is going to provide K and QT and then uh, A and F, the matrices, will be created. So notice that the uh, most important ones are, um, well, not the most important, I mean the ones that we decided to define separately are put in separate rows and then uh, the rest basically uh, follows. So let's copy this and go to, uh, sorry, let's, let's go to ChatGPT here and paste that. All right, now note that it's including something called Eigen. It's, it, uh, it wants to use the Eigen library. And because for this first lecture, we don't want to install any compiler here. Uh, so I doubt that this is going to work because online compilers usually don't have that Eigen library. It's, it's not a standard library. It is uh, a well-known, well-respected library, but it's uh, it's not well known so let's see copy code so if you google online c++ compiler c++ compiler you will get a whole bunch so but we just use this one here cpp dos dot sh so let's say what we're gonna so as you see here it gives fatal error eigen uh, dense file not found all right so we're gonna ask modify the code to um, not use the Eigen library. All right, now it has to choose its own method, Gauss-Jordanian elimination, to solve that matrix equation. So it's going to look a little bit more complex. All right. So it's uh, defining initializing matrix matrix A, matrix F. 
now Gauss Jordanian elimination All right, let's wait until it's finished. All right. So let's copy this, which is using the Gauss elimination method. So let's copy copy the existing code, delete it, and paste the new one here. All right, now it's asking for the value of k. So I'm going to explain what happens here. So let's say that I want to divide it into 10 segments. So I put 5 here. Uh, there it goes. One hugely large. So it seems like it is providing me with some acceptable answers so let's go through the code especially where it is uh, where it is eliminating where it is eliminating the uh, where it is initiating a matrix a so matrix a here uh, so after these uh, these two for loops this line here it says if i equals zero so zero means the first row so when i say the first row of a is this uh, is like this that uh, it says if j is equal to if j is smaller than k then the value is uh, should be one otherwise it should be zero and then for the last row which should be nth row but this writes n minus one in computer science. Uh, the the indices start from zero, so the nth uh, element here will be the n minus one element. So ChatGPT knows this, implements it properly, and then it's interesting. This last sign we didn't ask. I was expecting to see an error message, runtime error, but uh, let's. Let's see what it's doing here. All right. So I don't understand this, let's say. Uh, please explain this line of code. All right, certainly. So let's break it down. So this line of code is assigned to value so the matrix A as position, all right. So when it is considering at item number two, it puts a condition that when I is not equal to J. So when i is not equal to j, that means that if i was equal to j, then it would mean division by zero. So see, it is avoiding that. Uh, so you have to be. So I wanted to get an error message, but ChatGPT uh, avoided that. So this was this could have been a mistake. So this could have led to a bigger mistake here. But uh, well. All right, so now we have uh, this line here. Oh, this one I can copy output. So let's see if I can find another uh, online C++ compiler to see if I can actually copy the output. Let's see how this one works. So I'm going to copy. Run. 
five. One. All right. So. So then, um, create a LaTeX document which makes a plot using the following numbers. Let's see how this works. Now, I'm not going to properly um I'm not going to properly uh assign or scale the x and y axes but uh this will give you a general sense of how the charge distribution is going to look like to be able to do that to be able to properly scale the axes you would have to basically uh, do a couple things. One is uh, hey Siri, stop the timer. So you have to do uh, so you would have so you would have to do a couple things. One is that you need to uh, consider the length of the rod and also when you change matrix F to include Q, you have to sign some um, some constant there, some coefficients, because Q is Coulomb, F is, uh, in, uh, in terms of force, is Newton meter, is, is uh, yeah, is um, Newton, and uh, you cannot simply do that. Uh, but let's not go there, and let's just see how this is going to look like. LaTeX. Now I'm going to delete this, or let me see if I can actually add this to the end of PDF. Okay, let's not make it complicated. I'm go just going to delete the whole thing uh, and copy and paste this. Compile again. How it's going to look like? All right nice now this is your uh, plot so this is your charge distribution so this is your charge distribution given the segments of uh, of the uh, of the line here and you can of course run this and get run this again for different value of n say if you want you want n to be uh, 100 so let's say k is 50 so let me go back here and see if i can actually ah can't so modify the above code to use of uh, LaTeX code uh, to use these numbers instead
so now that we have uh, the results almost uh, let's see if it's not finished yet maybe this section is what I need to continue regenerating so I think it was a bit too long all right so let's uh, copy code here plot recompile all right so you get basically almost the same shape but uh, well of course with more dots and more accuracy probably so again uh, this index is just a number of if, uh, the index of the segments so let's say that we want to summarize this and get prepared for our next uh, class next lecture so the outline of the course if this is the outline of the course uh, we're going to be starting uh, from background theory uh, both in electrostatics, elect uh, magnetostatics, and then we'll proceed to electromagnetics. Uh, again, rigorous proofs will be provided. Then wire antennas, patch and horn antennas, array theory, linear array synthesis, and planar array synthesis, beam forming as done in LTE in 5G, parabolic antennas. Here we're going to use uh, physical optics, write codes to do that in uh, wire antennas is basically uh, going to be a place that you first start using the actual method of moments and the actual computational electromagnetics method uh, so uh, for next lecture what I meant to write is to uh, create a uh, one page presentation in uh, LaTeX for the following text. All right, so let's wait until this is done. All right, let's uh, copy this to Overleaf and see. Okay, I'm going to use the same. I'm going to. Ah, probably let's not get rid of this one. Let's not do that. Let's make another project. Um, outline right and delete this paste recompile all right so let's download this uh well obviously now you have to go and change uh, these parameters yourself and this is going to be a presentation package now I'm opening this in my own computer as you see that here I have many options here this is going to be very useful when you have uh, multiple slides uh, so and these are the items that we're going to be talking about right so and if I want to say that uh, for next lecture get ready so obviously we can guess that here it says course outline here it says course outline uh, so th this is basically start of a uh, frame is the start of a new um, slide so begin frame all right frame title and it gives me end frame as well so frame title i'm gonna ah, i'm gonna type uh next 
lecture. So next lecture is going to be, and again, if you uh, look here, uh, it's background theory. Where is background theory here? Background theory is here, and it has some item begin enumerate. So I'm going to do that, begin enumerate. All right, so it gives me everything I need automatically. Item, I want to say that uh, we'll start by uh, instructions on how to uh, install C++ uh, compiler and IDE uh, again another item well copy and paste how to install um, LaTeX actually I know probably this is let's go into write LaTeX in a new a fancy way item uh, okay proceed on electro statics so let's compile this all right see LaTeX is written in a fancy way Okay, let's now open the new one here. All right. So, next lecture, that's what we're going to do. Probably in a more organized way. So, get ready. If you want to be able to use uh, C++, if you want to be able to use uh any programming language of your choice and free and high quality plotting and documenting typesetting tools such as LaTeX without having to actually master them, without having to learn them, uh, this is the right course. And to my knowledge, as of now, this is the only course in the antenna field uh, that teaches you how to enter computational electromagnetics, computational antenna design without having to uh, learn the tools. This is the only course. See you at the next video.